Please welcome the tallest DJ in America, Aaron Trailer. We both have something in common. We, we both hug a lot. And uh, speaking of hugging, where's that live stream camera? Where is it at? Live stream camera somewhere? I want to give a big virtual hug out to my grandma who's watching right now. She took a big nasty spill and wasn't able to make it. So, grandma, I love you. And speaking of us being in front of a worldwide audience right now, people, we are at TEDx Whitefish. Yeah. Right now, that was a level four. Let's get to about a level 10, can we? Because get the party started. Let's hear it. Worldwide, everyone. That's right. That's what I do. I get the party started. And uh, I'll explain how that goes in just a few short minutes. But uh, first, the first slide I'm not even going to show you yet because I believe you already have these visuals in your mind. When we talk about Montana State being in the headlines, <laughs> we visualize things like uh, the Kardashians getting into a car wreck outside Bozeman. Uh, Justin Timberlake, he's raising his child not too far from Bozeman as well. Next door neighbors with John Mayer. Uh, everyone's talking about that. Uh, yoga pants ban, anyone? <laughs> We've been in the headlines quite a bit. A lot of crazy news, but then, again, I don't want to show you a slide because I, I don't want to paint a picture of something dark and nasty that is definitely within those texts. People tend to put us into these dark shadows. The uh, press loves to go with whatever leads, bleeds, and talk about just nasty things to paint a different picture of us. You know, stereotypes, labels. Uh, I, I, I believe we're bigger than that. I believe we can transcend beyond the bad news of Montana. I really believe we live in the last best place. Am I right? We really do. So what if I told you that anytime you see any bad news come across your timeline, you all have the power to push that lower down the timeline and bring your positive news up. I've got the tools. Uh, I've got the ability. I've got the data. I've got the analytics to empower you to go against any bad press this state receives. Now, I'll show you how, but wait, a lot of you heard in the intro, maybe you've seen me on the dance floor, I was the guy playing records, uh, I got the party started. That's me, um, I am Aaron Trailer. I'm a full-time DJ, and I love getting the party started, I love seeing dance floors full of people. That's my biggest reward, is being able to see all of you put down your cell phones, put down your laptops, and get out there and actually interact face to face. That is my reward, to see you all smiling and celebrating. But in order to get you to my dance floors, I had to go where you were, and that was in front of your desktops, in front of your computers. I had to get the word out. Now, but, uh, keep in mind, I don't have much of a budget, not exactly uh, rich by any means. Wasn't able to afford radio or TV ads. I used, thank God, uh, social media it's a free marketing service. A lot of us use it to you know, express our opinions, get people to uh, their parties or their events or whatever fundraisers and so on. I used social media in a slightly unconventional way, ways that people really uh, haven't used before in this state. I'm what's known as a gray hat hacker. I'm a hacker. I'm saying that in front of everybody. It's kind of scary. But gray hat hackers, let me explain my role. There's black hat hackers. Those are the ones who are a little bit more malicious. They go in there, they steal identities. They uh, break into websites. They uh, steal money. White hat hackers, they're on the other side. They're the whistleblowers. They're the heroes. They say to websites or companies, you know, you got a little security problem there. You might want to get that patched up. Gray hat hackers, we use the web in slightly rogue methods, but nothing illegal, not necessarily to harm, not necessarily to hurt or help for that matter. We just use it to benefit in ways that most people can't. How did I do it? Well, it started with creating more than one Facebook account. We all have our profiles. We all share our Twitter timelines and so on. Uh, we all share our identity on one profile. I created a lot of profiles, <laughs> a lot of profiles. Now, keep in mind, this is all publicly available. You just had to know where to look. If you can imagine my house, in my living room, at one point I had seven computers running 24-7, scraping data around the state of Montana. 
basically, any time somebody would create a profile and say, hey, I, I just moved to Missoula, Montana, or I'm living here in Whitefish, I caught that, I saw that, and I added you as a friend. Now, you're gonna see that pop up, you're gonna see uh, one of my accounts, and realize, okay, there's a bunch of mutual friends. This guy, I'm, I'll add him, because everyone else is, so that's how I got in. I got in with the full intention of getting the party started. 35 Facebook accounts, 15 20, uh, Twitter handles later, I reached 90,000 Montana fans. Now keep in mind, this was absurd back in 2012. It's a huge following. One button I could push out, party invites. Next thing you know, you can see right there, 12,000 people to one of my events. I wanted to get people to my parties, and uh, it worked. And now keep in mind, I'm not the only person who, who does these things. There's a lot of gray hat hackers, not necessarily in the state. Uh, they're all around. And I teamed up with them. I learned a lot from uh, their findings. And uh, I learned a lot about Montana. How, did, how, how is this? Well, again, I was in a search to try and get as many Montana profiles as I possibly could. Because I wanted to get them to my parties. But the byproduct of this social media experiment was unlike your timelines and your news feeds, mine have nothing but Montana people. So you're getting a full-on, laser-focused, real-time representation of what Montana does online, I, 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 unlike anything else. Some of you are out there following your brands, maybe some of you are following celebrities, uh, people from not necessarily around here, so your, your timeline's a little bit more cluttered with things around your world. Mine was nothing but Montana. And along the way, I learned some pretty interesting things about us. And I'm really excited to share it with you today. You ready to see some really cool facts about Montana you may not know? Some online nuances on how we really do our thing here? Get ready, let's have some fun. We're the nerd friendliest. <laughs> now, bear in mind, not everybody in Montana is nerd friendly, but from what I saw, from the data that I gathered, we liked more fan pages like Doctor Who, Star Wars, Star Trek, see what I mean? Nerd friendly. When it comes to sharing, how does Montana share on Facebook? Now again, I'm talking about the people that I looked at online. I'm not representing everybody in Montana, but I had a pretty good sample size to work with. We love going on special trips and sharing it. We love attending a memorable event. How many have posted something saying I met somebody famous? Raise your hand. Sure you have. I have. Uh, something nice your significant other did. Good work-related news. Those are the things we commonly like to share uh, with our friends. Montana tweets more about bars <laughs> and less about church. We got some good bars here, don't we? And we're in Whitefish, come on, brew capital of Montana. Montana, people online could really care less about the 1980s. We less like, we don't like pages like the Goonies or Three Amigos or Top Gun. I don't agree with this. I love the 80s. It's possibly the best decade of media ever, entertainment. They're missing out. It's sad. These are awesome. These are the terms that trended here first. <laughs> These shot up the trending timeline. If it wasn't for Montana State, soy sauce would never have become a trending topic. <laughs> Special K, that's her favorite breakfast. Back to Doctor Who, we made Doctor Who trend first in Montana. And ladies love sharing their trendy footwear. Y'all look good with your shoes. Show it off, nothing wrong with that at all. In the eternal debate as to how we define our soft drinks, raise your hand if you say soda. Who says soda? You're outnumbered. Pop is the overruling defining factor. That's how we define our soft drinks. <laughs> okay, here's something we can roll out the red carpets for. We're the least promiscuous state. <laughs> How do we know this? Well, because most people don't talk about their nightly conquests or who they got into bed with, and we tend to keep ourselves a little bit more private. It also might mean that we live in a really small town and we don't want the word to really get out that much, so that could be the case. This is my favorite slide. 
This represents a time when uh, Obama was going in for re-election. I just was curious to see you know, how many people had something racially charged to say. As you can see right there, there's a heat map indicating how many more people were active with uh, the words that I really won't want to repeat on stage, but they were uh, a little bit more vocal on Twitter. Montana, barely a blip on the radar. It's beautiful. Now, that was 2012. Just before my speech today, I did a search of about 760 people to see how well we reacted or how we reacted to the Baltimore riots. Now, 2% of my studies found that uh, more people were a little bit more racially uh, charged with their insults. 2%, 760 people from my sample size. Why is my sample size so low when I had 90,000 people earlier? I'll explain. My party kind of came to a crashing halt. We'll get there in a moment. We love to donate. We love to open up our wallets. We love to brag about that. And uh, we love to say, hey, here's something special I did, and here's how I helped. Um, we love talking about that online. Overall, Montana, on an emotional scale, online, we're neither pessimistic and angry, nor are we necessarily happy and unicorns and rainbows. When it comes to communicating online, from my case studies, I was able to find that we're just normal people. We're just fine. We share just interesting news, but we're not on one side of the scale or the other. On an emotional level, Montana is just fine and normal. That was until this happened. How many of you all remember this? This was the time when Montana was first put into the spotlight of studies concerning rape-related cases around the college campuses. University of Montana was put into the limelight, into the spotlight, and at some points, the New York Times, the USA Today's, uh, certain articles would pigeonhole us saying that we are just, uh, domestic and sexual violence is out of control in Montana. One even went so far as to call us the rape capital of America. That I took very seriously. I, it, it hit me so hard because I had been doing all this research, investigating Montana and how we do our ways online and getting to know the people around me in real life. We aren't those kind of people. We are just not as bad as they paint us out to be. I was so emotionally distraught over this. I, I sat in my cubicle at work and I thought, okay, what, what, what am I doing with this? How, how can I process this? I grabbed a piece of paper for the first time. I, I, I'm always typing. <laughs> and wrote my feelings down. I took this piece of uh, paper and I wrote my feelings on what a true Montana man should be. It says, uh, I, I'm a real Montana man. I respect all women. I know when no means no. I don't roofie drinks. I, I protect women in harm's way. And I knew I wasn't alone. So with just a couple of my accounts, a couple of my, my personal profile, my fan pages, I, I posted that photo. Just to just, this was actually my Wizard of Oz moment. Up until then, you were always getting those crazy party invites from me. You'd never seen my face online. This was me coming out from behind the curtain, identifying myself, not knowing what would happen. I put it out there, and this began to spread all over my town. People grabbed the pens of paper, and they said exactly what I was saying. I knew I wasn't alone. They wanted to define what true Montana men and women were like. It steamrolled. It got bigger. It became funded. The YWCA jumped in and took us out to places I never imagined. To fairgrounds to start with, they created these photo booths allowing people to put up signs and say, listen, I'm taking my stand against sexual and domestic violence. This campaign turned into the Make Your Move End Sexual Violence Initiative an action project, and you see it everywhere. You've seen these posters, I know you have. They duplicated, they blew up everywhere. The message was out there. We're putting a, our, our foot in the ground and saying who we really are. It was a beautiful thing. I, I, I sat back and thought to myself, okay, wait, hold on. I'm onto something here. I've got these tools and capabilities to get the word out, not necessarily about my parties anymore, but now we've got something going here to where we can Maybe do something more of an impact rather than fill my dance floors. What could I do next? That's when I was introduced to this young boy. Tyler Hennis, um, 
He, he is no longer with us, but he was suffering from a rare bone disease, a cancer that was spreading very fast. And at the moment I was introduced to him, uh, his family and friends said, we, we want you to fulfill one of his bucket list items. He wants to throw a party <laughs> with his friends. And I guess somehow they caught on that I was somewhat social media savvy, and I knew how to throw parties, so those were the keywords I needed, and I put the plan into motion. Using my accounts, I got the word out about this young boy. 48 hours later, this kid had the largest party any Montana kid has ever seen. 48 hours, people donated towards a cause. We held it at the coolest venue in my town with laser tag and go-karts and, of course, a dance floor. I've never been more proud. This was something that just hit me. Oh, boy, it still does today. What can we do now? What can I do now? We were onto something here. I learned another fact about Montana. One in seven people go hungry. A lot of people don't have food on their shelves. I came up with a kind of a crazy idea. I had heard that uh, there was this company that was creating this awareness cause of uh, feeding Montana, but using the uh, Washington Grizzly Stadium. And I thought, okay, what if we represent $5 donation to equal into 15 meals to go towards the uh, campaign. What if I sat in every bleacher? You know, every, just as a visual awareness of each one represents a ton of food for this nation, uh, for this uh, state. Well, um, I did. I went out there. I sat in every single bleacher and all the while receiving live tweets and campaigns and people pitching in and putting money towards this. Next thing you know, we were able to create the Feed Montana Stadium sellout, and I helped pitch in uh, towards $26,000, which equaled out to 15 uh, meals times that. So we're talking hundreds of thousands of meals. Yeah, it's really cool. Really, really cool. All of a sudden, the party was over. My dance floor was empty. And the reason why this happened was because Facebook, back in uh, January, began uh, wiping out the robot accounts. You had to have a real face with a real name attached to these profiles. And all of a sudden, my uh, ability to get my reach out was done. No more fake accounts. Back to just me. Just me, with no money, trying to get the party started. But what you may not understand, and you may have heard me you know, talking about my accomplishments and the things that I did, how I was able to do this for this young boy or, or feet. No, no, no. There's a common thread we're missing here. It wasn't just me. You got up out of your chair and raised money for the young boy dying of cancer. You wrote down on a pen and pad your thoughts about sexual and domestic violence. You helped feed Montana. I was just the guy that got the party started. You just kept on dancing. You did this. You have the power. You have it in front of you. Everyone's got a real account. I had 35 fake accounts. You've got what it takes to really make a change in this state. So when the USA Todays or the Time magazines or that published novel that just came out about Montana saying we're the rape capital of America, you can drown that out. You realize that, right? In fact, just last week, Facebook made a change to their algorithm. You may notice on your timeline right now that they're preferencing friends over fan pages and certain news items. They want you to get back in contact with your friends. You're going to see a lot less promotional stuff like, well, dance parties and events like, uh, that I used to promote. You can change. You can turn things around. I am telling you now, go out to your community. Find out what they need. What does your town need? Raise awareness. Build a campaign. And no longer will it be just me. It'll be everybody. Everybody jumping in for a common cause. So rally. Find that need. 
hop online, meet in real life, create hashtags. Right down uh, in Missoula, Montana, where I live, ours is hashtag our Missoula. We encourage people to share great news about the state and about our city, to go against the grain of what the bad press is saying about us. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. So as we all know, the theme of TEDx Whitefish is expanding great northern minds. My challenge to everybody out here is to expand others' minds about the great northern. They don't peg us the way we can peg ourselves. They seem to think they know us. They're going to label us and stereotype us. Get out there, expand their minds, educate them. You can do it. I believe in you. And with that, I say, let's get the party started. Thank you.